Hello world, Liu here, and today let's talk about 7 things I never knew about decorators in Python until recently. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm a software engineer from Singapore, and I create Python tutorials and practice questions of varying difficulty. Now, back to 7 things I never knew about decorators in Python. Number 1. Decorator Syntax And I actually did not know about this until my first year of working. So firstly, I'm going to define a hello function. So I'm just going to pass. And next, I'm going to have add some decorator function. So here, I've not actually created this function, but let's ignore that for now. So this is the decorator syntax. So we have a function, and we have the add symbol, and after the add symbol, we have the decorator function. So this is actually the same as define hello, and we write whatever we need to write here. And next, hello is equals to some decorator function, open and close bracket, hello. So here, this syntax is the exact same as this syntax. And whatever we are doing here is the exact same as whatever we are doing here. So now I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to use a proper example. So here I'm going to define greet. And I'm going to pass in a name and I'm just going to return hello and name. And next, I want to add a decorator that will add one exclamation mark after the return value of my greet function. So here, I'm just going to call my grid function first, so grid tom. And let's run this. And here, I'm just going to get hello tom. However, after adding this decorator, at add exclamation, I'm supposed to get hello tom and exclamation mark. So I do this because I do not want to change the source code of grid. So here, we haven't defined add exclamation, so we need to do that above. So I'm going to define add exclamation so add exclamation is a function and we have to take in another function so function so this function is the same as grid so let's keep things simple and inside our decorator we create a wrapper function so here the wrapper function will take in the same thing as grid so we pass in name and here we return function and we pass in name and here we do our function modification so plus exclamation mark. And at the end of our outer function, we return wrapper. So once again, if we run this, we are going to get hello Tom and exclamation mark. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to do this greet is equals to add exclamation greet. And if I run this, I'm going to get hello Tom with an exclamation mark. So here, we can see that this syntax is the exact same as this syntax. Number two, advanced decorators. From our previous example, we have a decorator that will add an exclamation mark after our return value. However, what if we want a decorator to add a question mark or a full stop? Do we create two more decorators, add question mark and add full stop? I mean, we can, but it seems like quite a tedious way to do things. And that's why we have advanced decorators. So here I'm going to remove this first. And instead of add estimation, I'm going to add symbol. And after add symbol, I'm going to have open and close bracket and I'm going to pass in an exclamation mark. So here, notice that we have an additional function call in our decorator. And we can actually vary the symbol that's being added to the back of our return value. So here we have just created a more flexible decorator. And here this is the same as greet is equals to add symbol exclamation mark and greet so here notice that there are going to be two function calls so here whatever that this returns is actually our decorator that takes in greet so here add symbol is an advanced decorator that returns a decorator so let's comment this out and let's write our advanced decorator so define add symbol and here we are going to take in a symbol and here we define decorator so similarly our decorator will take in a function and here we define wrapper so here our wrapper will take in the same thing as our grid function so i'm just going to put a name here for simplicity sake so here i return function name plus symbol 
So this symbol is from here. And in decorator, I return wrapper. And in add symbol, I return decorator. So here, if I run this, I'm going to get hello Tom with an exclamation mark. However, if I change this, let's say to a question mark, I'm going to get a question mark. So here with an advanced decorator like this, we can actually make our decorators much more flexible. Number three, classes can be decorators too. So in the previous example, we have two multi-nested functions, and this might seem a bit complicated and tedious. So instead, we can actually create a class to do this. So I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to create a class that will behave like a decorator. So class, add symbol, and so this function call will return a decorator. And since we are dealing with a class, we need to define the init method. So self and symbol. So self symbol is equals to symbol. And right now, if we run this, we are going to get an error. So add symbol object is not callable, which means that we are creating this object and we are trying to call this object. However, in order to make this callable, we can simply define the call magic method. So self and we take in a function. So similarly, define wrapper and wrapper will take in the same thing as greet. So we will take in name and return function name plus self symbol. And here I return wrapper. And if I run this once again, I'm going to get the correct output. So here, if I change this to a triple exclamation mark, I'm just simply going to get a triple exclamation mark. So here, this can be a more human readable alternative to our example here. Number four, decorators can be used for various tasks such as logging or timing stuff. So here, I'm just going to create a logger and I'm going to create my function. So define greet name and return f hello name. So I'm going to greet Tom. And if I run this, I'm just going to get hello Tom. However, if I want to log this, then I might need to do something like that. Logger dot info greet call so if i do this i'm gonna get greet call in my app dot log however whenever i call greet tom and if i wanna log it i have to call this logger dot info which can be a bit annoying so here let's create a decorator that will automatically log whatever we do so i'm gonna get rid of this and add log greet has been called so here, if we add our log decorator here, it should automatically log for us whenever our function is called. So let's define it here. So here we define our log decorator function and we take in a message. So here, this log is an advanced decorator, so we need to define decorator. And decorator will take in a function. So similarly, this takes in a wrapper. And it will take in name because it's the same as grid. And we'll return func name and here we return wrapper and here we return decorator so logger dot info message so every time before we call a function we'll actually log it so let's run this so hello tom and we should get another line here so it has been called so if we run it again notice that another line appears so here, with this log decorator, we no longer have to write logger.info every time we call our function. Number five, the built-in decorator cache. So here, I'm just going to import it first from functools, which we do not need to install. Import cache. So firstly, I'm just going to create a recursive function, so Fibonacci. So if n is equals to 1, we return 0. And if n is equals to 2, we return 1. And otherwise, we return fit of n minus 2 plus fit n minus 1. So here let's say we print fit 10. And here we should get 34. However, I'm going to print something every time a function is called. fit n is called. And if we run this, we should get many many function calls. And here we have it. So here notice that fit 3 itself is called once, twice, and many many other times. fit 3, fit 3 and so on. And this is because of the nature of our function. So here, if I decide to add a cache, notice that our total number of function calls is a lot less now. 
So here, if we do not use cache, we actually have a lot of repeated computations. And what cache does is that it will store all of our computations such that repeated computations do not recompute. Fit5 will only be computed once, and every other time that we need Fit5, it will simply be a stored value instead. So here, I'm going to time our function. So import time. So start is equals to time, and n is equals to time, and time taken is equals to n minus start. So I'm going to print time taken. So here, let's remove the cache first, and let's use 36. So here, let's run this, and we are expecting this function to take a certain amount of time. And here we have it, 1.78 seconds. However, if we decide to add a cache, we will get it instantaneously. So 5.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5. So this is almost instantaneous for us. So here, we can see that the cache function actually does reduce the time taken for our function by quite a lot. Number 6, the built-in static method and class method. So here, let's create a simple class, class dog, and let's define in it self name h. Self name is equals name, self h equals to h. And here, let's define a bug. So it takes in the self and it prints woof. So here, we simply have a normal class. However, first, let's talk about class method. So here, bug is actually an instance method and it belongs to the instance of a class. However, if we use class method, so define, let's say, get all dog names so instead of self i'm going to pass in cls so what's happening here is that the class method will cause our method here to become a class method which means that this method belongs to the class dog rather than to any object so here i'm going to return cls dot all dog names and since i haven't defined this i need to do that and i'm going to put it here and here self dot class dot or dot names dot append name. So what's happening here is that because of this decorator, this will be a class method and a class method will take in the class. So here we can assess the attributes of our class. So let's say I create two more dogs, Rocky, Fifi, and Baron. And next we print dot dot get all dog names. So this is a class method. So here if we run this, we'll get Rocky, Fifi, and Baron. So similarly, if we use the static method decorator, we will create a static method. So let's create a random thing. So add x and y and we simply return x plus y. So here, a static method does not have any access to the class or instance attributes. So a static method will simply take in x and y. So I'm going to print dot dot add, let's say uh, 4 and 5, and we will simply get 9 here. Number 7, the built-in decorator wraps. So similarly, I'm just going to import it for now from fun tools, import wraps. And next, I'm going to paste my original at exclamation example. So here, once again, if we print greet Tom, we are going to get hello Tom with an exclamation mark. So ignoring the function call, let's print greet dot name and greet dot dot. So before that, let's remove the decorator first and let's run this. So here, the name of our function, which is greet.name, will be greet and dog will be nothing. So let's actually add a dog here. So greet is someone. And let's rerun this. And we are going to get greet and greet someone. However, if we add our decorator, this will be different. So here we have wrapper and none. And this is because we are actually reassigning greet to this wrapper function over here. So this can be a problem as we might be missing some of this important information. So instead, we can use add wraps function. So if we run this again, notice that the name and dog will be preserved. So here, the wraps decorator will actually preserve the name and dogs of our original function grid. So if we want the name and dog and other information to remain the same, we can use the wraps decorator here. So once again, thanks for watching and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python decorators today. See you in the next one.